blue with the white or silver stripe. Pierce, again, out of Civic Memorial, being the purple singlet out there. And Pierce's head coach is Chad Young. And as many of you know by now, the head coach, Dean Brad Stedler, at uh, Marmion High School. And he's helped by Joe Sylvester over there in the corner right now. Again, Pierce in on a nice shot off that tie-up. Fisher's, uh, uh, you know, another kind of has a style very similar to uh, Jimenez. You know, he's a, he's a guy that likes to slow the pace of the match down. He does a good job with hand control. Always seems to be in close matches. You know, that's the type of uh, type of a kid that he is. And uh, he's put together a pretty good tournament here. Had some close calls, but, uh, you know, that's what he does. He wins those close ones. Well, that's the style I think maybe Marmion wrestles because in a little bit we'll see Silvestro at 138, and he's very similar to as far as his technique and approach to the match. Mm -hmm. It's a little slide by there by Fisher. Again, Pierce is looking to drive him and keep the toes in. And help me out if I'm wrong here. Didn't Fisher start the year at 132, and because of maybe some injuries, they dropped him to 126? Well, yeah, he was at 32 uh, for the season, and um, uh, there was an injury to uh, Eddie Greco, who Greco, was ranked exactly. very highly for Marmion all, all year long, and uh, Eddie was uh, uh, dropped out of the off the team, and uh, because of that, and so Fisher uh, was able to go down to 126 at that point. So um, he's taking advantage of it. And Pierce representing Bethalto down there. Talk about earlier how the South programs have developed so much in the past few years. You know, during the jumbotron, they talked about Mark Mestemacher and the great things he's done for the southern part of the state. And Pierce is an example of a boy who was able to take advantage of that. You just saw he gets a takedown, and he leads two to nothing with about 20 seconds left in the period. Uh, he's doing an excellent job. He's he's a, a you know very very dominant wrestling and wrestler. And you know, last year obviously uh, you know at the time. Ben Whitford, um, you know, he was uh, could have been considered the best wrestler in the state of Illinois, and uh, you know, obviously he has since left. But uh, you know, so I think that was kind of a a, a bad break for uh, for Pierce. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, he would be uh, possibly a defending champion. I big believe point good for, enough. Big point for Fisher to get here if he could. We're inside ten. And here he is. He's looking. To, the referee stops that for a potentially dangerous good call. Yep. Now he's telling them there, there's a certain rule situation the referees have to follow here as far as when it becomes stalling. And I think Ronnie Coit, the referee there, just informed the kids as far as where they are in that. Well, the bottom man has a responsibility also. He can't keep coming up as long as the top man puts the leg in before First. the stand-up, which is what's been happening, and they write out the period, then the bottom man can't stand up and force that, that restart or force that stalemate, or that becomes a stall too. So Fisher will defer. Pierce will take the bottom. Two to nothing, second period. Again, Pierce off the bottom seemed to just brace himself instead of moving qu quickly to try and get away. And now he's locking up some type of roll there and spins to the hips and gets his reversal. So he knew what he was doing, obviously. <laughs> he leads four to nothing. It looked like some type of a Gramby, but I'll tell you what, I, I don't like his position on top. It looks like he's getting a little high where he was. And, and Fisher's, you know, he's swimming and he's head hunting there. He kind of has got a unique style. Notice how he throws the one leg, but then instead of trying to throw the second one, he just hooks it on the outside. And he looks like he's in terrible position, but he was very comfortable well, he's got there that earlier today. Yep. Here, if he can get hip to hip here, Fisher could be in trouble. He's going to work to get that leg out. Yep. How long is the ref going to let him stay there? He did suicide it and turned him. And it's going to get, I believe, two near fall. Huge points there. So again, while it looks unorthodox there on top, it works well for him, and he uses his hips and gets it, keeps him in a position that he's comfortable with. We're inside a minute left. Well, in he's a uh, you know he's really a complete wrestler, like I, I was saying before, David, and and he's showing it here today. He can score from all positions, and you know I think that's uh, another thing. Getting back to your comment about college wrestlers, as you know, um, you know you have to be able to wrestle in the top position if you're going to be successful in college, and so the ability to ride and turn and even pin. Is, uh, is something that uh, not every wrestler possesses. Oh, it's a great weapon to have, and we consistently talk about maybe that's where the state of Illinois falls behind when our kids get to college. Great on their feet, but because of our style here, we don't necessarily do well on the top position or even the bottom position. 
Well, and that's that's what happens. Illinois is, is you know, really more of a feat state in terms of what we do. And, yeah, you're right about that. And that does, uh, you know, sometimes become a style. And I know that we've been fortunate enough uh, in my days as coach, and I know that Montini still does now, and a lot of other schools now are following suit and getting out to the East Coast, wrestling in the Ironman tournament. You'll see Dylan Real later on here uh, wrestling. And, uh, you know, the Washington team made the trip out to the Ironman this year because – they know it's good for them, and they know that they're going to be exposed to different types of wrestling, and a loss or two out there is going to uh, really come in handy and, and, and be a better situation as we go. Pierce got the leg in again, and this time it's warning green because he stood up into the legs, and that's the that's the rule. Coach Silvestro's not happy about it, but, you know, that's the deal. He's standing up into it. First two were st uh, stalemates, and the third one becomes a warning for stalling. Again, my son Duke coaches over in Iowa, and they've got a totally different style over there. Boy, they get on top of you, and they just want to grind you. Mm -hmm. And the, very rarely do they cut people. Very rarely do they want to spend much time on their feet. They want to get on top and just beat on you. Well, and, and it's also, uh, you know, the same way in Ohio and on the East Coast. And there's Pierce. Looks like he could be in a little bit of trouble yeah. in that situation we were talking about there. Not much time inside 10 seconds. See if he can bail out and not give yep. up too much. He gets his hips up and he stays, he stays nice on job top. No score there. Again, they had him in uh, Fisher had him in trouble, and because of his confidence up there with the legs, he was able to avoid getting himself into big problems. Again, here's, here's where sometimes I differ from most people as far as things go. He chooses bottom. He's down 6 0 and been ridden, like, uh, ridden out quite a bit. And he's got to go after and get some points here. Looks like they're going to take injury time. Marmion's going to take injury time for something. Yeah, I agree with you, Kevin. You know, it's a 6 nothing. Of course, I'll tell you what, he, maybe he's thinking the best shot he has to score here is if, uh, you know, Pierce makes a mistake on top like he almost did yep. there. You know, and that, that, that could be something he's thinking too. And He did almost have him in that defensive fall position when the, with the leg was in, and he kind of had his shoulders trapped for a second, but he bailed out quickly. So maybe that's the reasoning behind it. But he is on injury time here to start the third period. Again, 126 was another deep weight class this year. Doug Johnson from DeKalb won the third place match earlier in the day over a uh, in a tough, tough match against Michael Sepke from uh, Montini. And Lamont had a good kid named uh, uh, Jake Latansky. And um, Johnson from Bowen was also a kid, Bowen uh, uh, City School. And, um, you know, they've had quite a few guys that have made a splash the uh, last couple of years here in the state tournament. So, again, 26 was another real deep weight class in 2A. Yeah, Johnson lost to Fisher in the Sterling sectional in the final, and it was a real nice match to watch. Fisher's on his feet here. He, again, he came up into the leg. We'll see what's going to happen as soon as he can. Leg comes off. Comes into a scramble position. Pierce steps over, and no points. Again, fit, now Pierce has both legs in, and he'll just ride him forever here. It depends how long the ref's going to let him stay in there. Hips are tight. Got the wrist pulled in. And on the edge, you'll get a restart. Yeah, Fisher's got to make something happen right away off this start. He can't let him get him flat because then the legs come in and he's going to struggle for a while. Again, Fisher's body movement shows me that he's, he's kind of looking like he's not having a whole lot of confidence as far as what he's going to get done here. In well, the last he's, 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 I don't know what his injury is. I don't know the nature of it, but he's kind of had that same body language all tournament. He, he, uh, he had a real tough semifinal match and uh, that he barely got through. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if he's been injured all tournament, but he certainly uh, hasn't been able to, to uh, have an effort. Yeah, he and Sepke was a great match to watch in the semifinals. He ended up beating him. I was final score, I believe, 6-5. to five. And Pierce is down there on the side, and he's going to take some injury time here. Well, we couldn't see it. The table is in the way, so I think he's got a... Uh, he thinks he's got a bloody nose. I don't know if blood time or now they're saying blood time. Yep, they originally started the injury clock. Now they change it to the blood clock. And again, for those of you that don't understand, injury time you get a minute and 30 seconds, and blood time you get five minutes. So obviously you'd rather be on the blood time. 
Blood time, you get to use it unlimited times. And the injury time, the second time, the other boy gets choice of position against him. The third time, you would be disqualified. Yep. It looks like they're going to get a restart here. Might just a, uh, I think it was blood time. Minute 13 left here in the third period. Now I know that I've seen Fisher, you know, at various times this year and last year. He's done a pretty good job on top. If he gets a takedown here, look for him to go right to some type of an aggressive turn. I know he's got a pretty good cradle. I've seen him uh, work from that cross take, cross face Turk position. He's in on a nice shot, a lot of scrambling. Hips are moving. Again, Pierce did a great job of scrambling around. I'm really impressed with his, I use the word scramble Absolutely. ability, if that's correct English. Yeah. And Fisher's kind of in a home run mode right now. He's taking chances and opening up. He knows he's down five, so he's passing up possible scoring opportunities here because he knows he needs to hit something big. Well, that's always my point, and I'm sure their coaches feel the same way at this point in time. What difference would it make if you lose by nine or ten? But take that chance in order to try and get something done. It's not like it's a dual meet where you mm -hmm. want to keep it under the major and things like that. And again, Pierce is playing it smart. He's getting in there underneath to stay out of the throws, more than willing to give up a takedown here. Six to three with just over 20 seconds to go. Again, they're trying to scream at Fisher's Fisher, gonna, jump to the side, to take a chance. Top. Yeah, He's going to come, come out front and work that arm bar Pierce, series. Pierce just isn't going to come up. He's just going to lay there. We're inside 10 seconds. And our state champion that here at 126 pounds will be David Pierce, a senior from Bethalto Memorial. Again, he's coached by Chad Young. And it's finally a state championship for him. He's done, come close before, and this is it. Second place would be George Fisher, George Jr. out of Marmion Academy. So David ends his career with a, with a state championship. Congratulations, David Pierce. All right, well, again, we've got some awards to pass out. We'll be back with our 132-pound match in just a couple minutes.